So it's my uh, pleasure to introduce today our uh, visiting Braun Intertech professor, uh, Professor Dong Chen, who's from Indiana Purdue, wait, Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne, yeah. right? <laughs> That's longer than civil longer. environmental and geoengineering, so just, <laughs> so uh, Professor Chen, he got a, a bachelor's degree from uh, Tongji, and a master's degree from Tongji, yeah. and another mm. master's degree yeah. from uh, Nanyang Technological University in uh, Singapore. Hmm. And then his PhD at Ohio State with hmm. uh, Linda Weavers was his advisor, yeah. and Linda right. is, uh, did her hmm. undergraduate in this department, and was a hmm. broad intertech visiting professor about 10 years ago. So he's uh, obviously following cycle. in the correct <laughs> footsteps. Hmm. So uh, it's been nice to have him here as a visitor, so hmm. happy to hear about some of his research. Yeah, thank you, Bill. Hmm. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for this opportunity and the support uh, from uh, Brown visiting uh, professorship. My name is Dong Chen uh, from Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. My presentation topic is uh, ultrasonic uh, de degradation of anthropogenic uh, contaminants and the natural organic matters. Uh, there, is, uh, uh, there are wide applications of ultrasound in our daily life as well as in engineering field. Uh, first is the uh, degradation of organic contaminants, especially recalcitrant anthropogenic contaminants, which is a topic of my presentation today. Uh, also, ultrasound can be used for disinfection, uh, cleaning, and uh, diagnostic. This uh, case is uh, with a uh, very high frequency, uh, between 2 million and 15 million uh, uh, hertz, and uh, low intensity, make sure no damage to human tissue. And uh, also for underwater uh, uh, detection and mapping. It's a, with a very wide frequency. Yeah. Here's a picture of a typical 20 kilohertz ultrasonic probe system uh, uh, used in a lab to degrade a recalcitrant uh, organic contaminants. I brought this one to uh, UMN and the study degradation of perfluorinated uh, 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 organic carbon. Yeah. What is ultrasound? Ultrasound is a longitudinal wave greater than 18 kilohertz. Yeah. Uh, so when we, when we apply ultrasound to a water, uh, me water medium, it uh, generates uh, periodic uh, compression and expansion cycles. Yeah. So cavities can form during the rearfection of ultrasound when it pulls water molecules away from each other. Uh, when it's uh, strong enough, it exceeds the tensile strength of water, it forms cavities. Then the cavities can grow uh, during several cycles and finally collapse during the uh, positive cycle when ultrasound push it collapse, uh, cause violent collapse of a uh, uh, cavitational bubble. Let's look at the diagram of a cavitational bubble. Uh, it produces uh, chemical effects. Here's the center of the cavitational bubble. During collapse, it can generate temperature about 5,000 K and pressure 500 ATM. Yeah, so under such uh, high temperature and high pressure, water vapor along with the uh, volatile compounds can be thermalized. The reaction of water vapor thermalized produce OH radical. If you are familiar with the uh, uh, advanced oxidation process, OH radical is a major player for advanced oxidation process. Hmm. It's 5,000 uh, kelvins? Yeah, kelvin. Yeah, but the amount of heat that it generates is probably very, very small. It's exactly. Significant, right? Exactly. So it's, that temperature is, looks very dramatic, but... Yeah, the gradient is a, it's a huge, yeah, it's, yes. It's, it's a very small amount of energy. Yes. With, uh, how big is the size of, the, how big is the size of the bubble? Typically between one micron to 100 micron. Very, si very small, yeah very small, but the temperature is huge, huge. Next region is the interfacial region. It's bubble water interface. In other words, during sonication, we create uh, two phases in water, air and uh, air bubble and water. The interfacial region, uh, the temperature about 2000 K, uh, lower than the core, but still high enough to degrade organic contaminants. And the width is about 200 nanometer. Yeah, lifetime is two microsecond. Yeah, so it causes vast gradients of temperature and pressure can oxidize, 
thermalized non-volatile hydrophobic ionic compounds. Yeah. Third region is bulk region. It's an uh, ambient uh, temperature and the accumulation of hydrogen peroxide, which is unreacted OH radical combining together to form hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. I use different color to indicate the temperature profile, highest uh, between and the ambient temperature. Yeah. Okay. Guess what's the temperature at the sun's surface? Five thousand? Yeah. yeah, good, good guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, about five thousand K. Yeah. So in other words, we create numerous micro-sized sun in water. This uh, this uh, reaction sites for degree of tough organic compounds. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So overall, sonal chemical reaction rate. It's a combination of in the gas phase, the core of the cavitational bubble, interface, and bulk. Yeah. Generally, the amplitude of the degradation rate decreases from the gas phase, the decrease from the interface and bulk. Yeah. So if we want, if we want to best utilize the characteristic of ultrasonic degradation, we would prefer volatile and hydrophobic compounds. Volatile will go to gas phase and hydrophobic will accumulate as a bubble water interface. If we utilize bulk phase only, it's uh, less efficient. It's an almost no difference to other kind of uh, advanced oxidation process. So like uh, we buy a, a house, reactions, the site is a uh, location, location. Here, same <coughs> reason, reaction site is important. Location is important. Okay. These are properties of contaminants and the dynamic processes. Yeah. So the contaminants properties are important because first is the thermodynamic, thermodynamic properties like uh, hydrophobicity. We use the term called the uh, octan, octanal water partition co coefficient. Yeah. Higher KOW means a higher, uh, greater hydrophobicity because greater hydrophobicity will make the bubble water interface as a destination for this uh, hydrophobic compound. Okay. Next term is a uh, Henry's loss constant. It's a uh, describe, quantify the, how volatile the compound is. Yeah, which means uh, if they can go to the core of the bubble, yeah, volatile, then uh, consequently will be uh, thermalized under high temperature and high pressure. And the uh, surface excess is uh, evaluate how much uh, distribution in the bubble water surface instead of uh, compared to the bulk solution. So this thermodynamic property makes the destination either go to the core, go to the bubble water interface. Then it also depends on the kinetic property of the contaminant, how fast they move. Because when we produce, uh, when we uh, introduce ultrasound to water, bubbles continuously form and uh, collapse. Yeah, it's a dynamic process. So during the short time, uh, how fast the compound can move into the bubble water interface or even go to the course is also important. So ideally, if a compound is hydro highly hydrophobic with a high Henry's constant and uh, with a faster diffusion coefficient will be great for ultrasonic degradation. This is a photo I took to visualize the cavitational region of ultrasound. Uh, it's from a 20 kilohertz ultrasonic probe. Top one is a one inch diameter ultrasonic probe, 20 kilohertz. Uh, see, the, the, the photo was taken by uh, drop this ultrasonic probe into a luminal solution. Uh, this luminal monoionine will react with a high, uh, OH radical produced by ultrasound and emit light at a wavelength of uh, 430 nanometer. So this technique uh, help us to visualize the cavitational region. Yeah, you can see a little bit uh, uh, impact of the flow. I use a cross flow uh, cell, see the water 
the luminous solution flow from the lower left corner and uh, to the top right corner. You can see the flow pattern also impact, uh, also have a little bit impact to the shape of the cavitational region. In other words, the brighter spot indicates higher OH radical concentration. Yeah. Okay. So this cavitational region is especially important if you want to uh, study cleaning or something. Yeah. If uh, the object you want to clean is too close to the probe, the cavitational uh, physical effect of cavitation can damage the object. Yeah, I will show you some slides later. It's a, I took several weeks to take this picture. It's a totally in a dark room, yeah, okay. no light. Okay. Uh, besides chemical effects, uh, ultrasound also have a strong physical effects of ultrasound. Uh, see here, it's a acoustic streaming first. Uh, what's acoustic streaming? It's a water medium absorb ultrasonic energy as a result. Water molecules flow along the propagation direction of ultrasound. It's acoustic streaming. Next, it's a cavitational bubble indicated by the uh, yellow uh, circle. Uh, and the particle is a black circle. Uh, in this case, particles serve as a, a nucleus for cavitational bubble to form and grow on its surface because when ultrasound pull water molecules away, typically cavi uh, cavitation uh, site formed from the weakest link of the water molecule. Yeah. So this uh, nucleus, par uh, nucleus effect of the particle, then uh, we ultrasound generate micro streaming and the micro streamers. What's micro streaming? It's a bubble under the impact of ultrasound, it, the position of the bubble wall gonna expand during the uh, Reaffection of ultrasound and the shrink during the compression cycle. So the bubble wall, po uh, position of the bubble wall <coughs> produce micro streaming. Also micro streamers, it's a migration of the cavitational bubble from anti-node to node yeah, in the acoustic field. Once cavitational bubble collapse, it generates shock wave. Shock waves, its pressure amplitude can be as high as one gigapart. And uh, micro jets simultaneously produced uh, from the cavitational collapse with a velocity about 100 meter per second. It's a small size, but a high energy density. Yeah. So overall, ultrasound produced this phenomen, uh, phenomenon, uh, phen uh, phenomenon and uh, leading to the high turbulent flow inside the solution. So ultrasound can be used for cleaning based on this physical effect. Also can be used for desorption because turbulence, yeah. You have contaminated soil or sediment, you can apply ultrasound. So uh, can uh, facilitate desorption from the solid phase to liquid phase. Yeah, this cleaning, this uh, sharing of a solid surface is uh, proportional to the velocity gradient, uh, dV velocity and the, uh, over the distance and the times uh, viscosity with the sharing, st uh, sharing stress. Okay, this uh, picture, famous picture, uh, cap captured by Krum uh, from a, at the moment of a cavitational bubble collapse. You can see this cavitational bubble on a solid surface. And uh, at the moment of collapse, it uh, produced microjet, microjet toward the solid surface. Yeah, why not toward the liquid? Because uh, it's uh, not symmetrical. Uh, no water can flow from the uh, solid surface upward, so it collapses toward the solid uh, surface instead. Yeah, and uh, after collapse, uh, they observe the pitting damage to the metal surface. So it uh, indicates a high uh, energy density uh, during the moment of uh, cavitational bubble collapse. What's the scale of this picture? What? What's the scale of those? Pictures? It's a mic micron size. Uh, the bubble size typically between one micron to 100 micron. Yeah. Hmm. I will show you uh, my observation. This, uh, I put a water filtration membrane. Yeah, uh, I did study use ultrasound to clean a, a clogged uh, water filtration membrane. Once the membrane if, uh, is within the cavitational region, like the luminal uh, picture I took, and you can see the damage by the uh, pitting damage from the cavitational collapse. See the diameter is about one micron. Yeah. First one, 
uh, review, uh, lift the top surface, damage the top surface, we can, saw, we can see the subsurface of the membrane. And the uh, second one, we couldn't see. Maybe already penetrated the membrane or the subsurface is too deep to see. Uh, another important physical effect of ultrasound is that ultrasound can physically break down big molecules. Big molecules. Here is an example of polystyrene. Uh, it also feeds uh, natural organic matter. Yeah. So uh, this is a polystyrene near an ultrasonic probe, and uh, the, under the impact of ultrasound, the flow acoustic streaming or ultrasound generate turbulence can help to open the gyration of the polymer, so increasing radius of the gyration. Once cavitational bubble collapsed, uh, it's close enough to the micromolecule, the shock wave from the, at the moment of collapse can uh, break down the covalent bond of the micromolecule, micromolecule, yeah. So they, re they observe the radical species after the uh, covalent bond is broken. Okay, so what are the advantages of ultrasound? It's a non-conventional uh, decontamination technology. Uh, it creates localized cavitation hotspot, high temperature and uh, OH radical. Almost no uh, organic contaminants can survive both attacks, both attack high temperature and uh, hydroxyl radical simultaneously. Yeah, so good for degradation volatile compounds because uh, these compounds go to thermolytic center. Yeah. Also good for hydrophobic or surfactants. Uh, hydrophobic, uh, due to its uh, uh, hydrophobicity, they gonna go to the bubble water interface. Also surfactant has hydrophobic tails like natural organic matter, also uh, perfluorocarbon. Yeah, they have a hydrophobic tail. They will accumulate near the water bubble interface. So. Remember the temperature about 2000 K, it's still high enough to degrade, also rich in OH radical. Yeah. So for contaminated soil, uh, solids like soils and sediments, uh, con the ultrasound combines desorption and degradation together. Yeah. No chemical use. So uh, although later I will show you argon is an option, but uh, it's uh, not necessary. Yeah. So you know, the whole process, you can just insert ultrasonic probe so multiple degradation mechanism happen at the same time. No chemical. <coughs> so uh, in, uh, in the following slides, I show you some examples of uh, uh, ultrasonic remediation of environmental contaminants, anthropogenic contaminants. First example is a pharmaceutical compounds. Yeah. Pharmaceutical compounds. When uh, FDA approved a drug, they typically, they never consider the environmental consequence. Yeah. So uh, after consumption, these drugs got to, gonna go to the uh, city's sewer system or illegal dumping. Yeah. So finally, they will enter uh, surface water and groundwater uh, for, uh, for the drinking source, uh, for the source of drinking water treatment. So uh, bad news is, uh, our traditional drinking water treatment plant and uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, don't consider uh, remove this, uh, are not designed to remove these contaminants. So uh, sometimes uh, uh, we need to consider how to use uh, uh, advanced oxidation or non-conventional uh, non treatment technology to degrade these uh, pharmaceutical compounds. See these uh, six uh, pharmaceutical compounds were selected for ultrasonic degradation. So they were selected based on their popularity, also the hydrophobicity. Hydrophobicity. It ranged from uh, chemotherapy drug, uh, hormone, and uh, anti-cholesterol anti drugs. Yeah. So basically, uh, the hydrophobicity is an uh, increase from five FEO, IBU, CLND, uh, ESTO. Uh, knife and the uh, lobes, yeah. So let's see how uh, ultrasound behave to degree these uh, contaminants. Generally, it follows the trend of uh, hydrophobicity. In other words, 
greater, uh, faster degradation happens with a greater uh, hydrophobicity. Yeah. Uh, uh, LOVA, uh, LOVS has a greatest hydrophobicity and with some uh, most significant degradation. 5FU has the lowest hydrophobicity, uh, which means uh, they prefer in the bulk region instead of go to the bubble uh, water interface. Yeah. However, one exception is uh, ibuprofen. Uh, it's supposed to have a low degradation. However, it's, uh, it's pretty high, uh, faster degradation. Let's look at the property of these uh, six uh, chemicals. Yeah. Uh, ibuprofen has a second uh, order reaction rate constant with uh, OH radical. It's pretty high, pretty high. Among the known uh, second order reaction rate constant, it's highest. More importantly, it has a high Henry's loss constant, which means uh, the they can be degraded not just at the bubble water interface, also in the core, gas phase, gas phase, core of the cavitational bubble can be thermalized. As a result, no wonder we see outstanding or more degradation occurred, even if it's a hydrophobicity, it's a not so great. Yeah. Yeah. We also need to consider natural organic matters when we use ultrasound to de uh, de decontaminate uh, uh, water or wastewater because the natural organic matters uh, is no, not anthropogenic contaminants. They are, they are from nature. Yeah, like this picture, uh, even without human pollution, you can see water like a little bit yellowish because it contains natural organic matter. They are from the decomposition products of plant and animal matters in nature. Yeah. They are complicated and you define uh, macromolecules, the ubiquitous. Yeah. Uh, so they will participate for ultrasonic remediation, definitely, because they're present there. Okay. So how does NOM, another term is uh, uh, EFOM, we call it effluent organic matter. This is uh, typically from the treated uh, sewer. Yeah because we use a microbial degradation process to treat uh, municipal wastewater, microorganism gonna secrete uh, polysaccharide, extracellular polysaccharide, extracellular polysaccharide, yeah, substances. Uh, they will uh, appear in the background as a uh, organic uh, matrix. So they will participate uh, ultrasonic remediation as well. Yeah. So they can compete, they have a competing effect. NOM or EFOM react with OH radicals, definitely. And the quenching effect, NOM diffuses to bubble surface, uh, occupy the reaction site, and the quenching the ultrasound induced reactivity, including temperature and the OH radical. And the cage effect, NOM traps the target contaminant, preventing it from diffusing to the bubble surface. So generally with the presence of uh, NOM or EFOM, typically we will see decrease uh, in the reaction rate uh, by ultrasound. Okay, here is a uh, fractions of effluent organic matter using uh, XAD resin. Uh, uh, the effluent organic matter is fractioned into hydrophobic fraction, hydrophilic fraction, and transphilic fraction. Most part is hydrophobic, then uh, similar it's a uh, hydrophilic fraction and the transphilic fraction is a, it's a least. However, transphilic fraction with the highest aromaticity, which uh, contain a lot of uh, aromatic rings, yeah, based on sewer uh, 280. Yeah. Uh, also, it's a, a molecular weight, it's, a, it's small, just a little bit of, uh, higher than hydrophilic fraction. Then we see how ultrasound perform in these uh, background chemicals. First is the DI water, yeah, highest degradation rate for five uh, FU, this compound. Yeah. Uh, then wastewater, because wastewater has the highest uh, TOC concentration, 8.87, before fraction and after fraction couldn't get such high concentration. So wastewater get uh, uh, impede the greatest uh, extent uh, for the pharmaceutical compound. Then we compare apple to apple. 
five, uh, three milligram per liter TOC, total organic carbon for all three fractions. This is hydrophobic, transphilic, and hydrophilic of the EFOM. Transphilic uh, had the biggest drop of the reaction rate. Then we do another chemical loaves. It's a, a, a pharmaceutical with the greatest uh, hydrophobicity. Similar trend was observed. Again, transphilic EFOM is a, has a greatest uh, impeding effect for ultrasonic degradation. Why? Transphilic EFOM quenches reactivity and interacts with the pharmaceutical compounds. They they have a high, highest uh, aromaticity. They are also small. They can quickly diffuse to the bubble water interface and uh, impede the reaction, compete for pharmaceutical compounds. Okay, next example I would like to talk is a uh, research I, I have been done uh, uh, during my visit uh, UMN. Yeah, it's a perfluoro chemicals. Perfluoro carbon. It's a, it's a family of chemicals containing a, a fully fluorinated carbon chain and one of several different end groups, sulfonate and carboxylate. These two, uh, P4 and P4 are the most common one. Yeah. They are very stable in nature and with wide applications. Uh, they are toxic and bioaccumulative. Uh, yeah. Uh, they are used in uh, fire fighting forms. Uh, these chemicals are very uh, unique. They, they are hydrophobic. They don't like water. They don't like oil either. So, so they are widely used for uh, fire fighting and uh, water repellent, also oil repellent. Yeah. So uh, for carpeting and carpet care, uh, treat, uh, treated clothes, yeah, coating to uh, uh, keep it waterproof, also oil proof. Yeah, so also medical and garments and uh, sealants for stone, tile, and wood. This uh, chemical uh, is, uh, these chemicals are, I believe, uh, invented by 3M. Yeah. So EPA listed them six of these chemicals as a uh, unregulated contaminant monitoring rule three, which means uh, EPA want to monitor, uh, see how wide distribution and how high the concentration then consider this fact and uh, what to do for the next step. So three uh, carboxylates and uh, three sulfonates. Yeah, in my study, I choose PFNA and the PFHXS, see how uh, effective ultrasound degradation is. <coughs> this uh, uh, strong carbon flooring bond make them very uh, persistent in nature and human body. Yeah. Resist OH uh, radical oxidation, so traditional treatment technologies are ineffective. Yeah, only people study with a very strong uh, oxidant or uh, use direct photolysis or microwave high temperature to break them. However, for ultrasound, uh, they are non-volatile, so they couldn't go to the core uh, of the cavitational bubble. But at the interface, they are hydrophobic. They have hydrophobic tail. Uh, so high temperature at the bubble water interface, about 2,000 K, still can uh, thermalize the bonds and uh, uh, degree the chemicals. This gave you a rough idea how strong these bonds are. Yeah, this CF bond, it's a dissociation uh, energy, requires uh, 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 more than 500 kilo, uh, kilojoule per mole, and the CS bond, even higher, over 700. And the CF3, CF3 bond is uh, about 400. Strong chemicals. These are two compounds I study sonochemical degradation, PFNA and the PFHXS. PFNA has nine carbons, and the PFHXS has six, six carbons. Yeah. <coughs> okay, first degradation uh, test performed in three millimole sodium chloride solution. Yeah, just ultrasound. Okay, uh, we see faster degradation uh, of PFNA than PFA, uh, PFHXS. Yeah, uh, 
like the table I showed you before, the carbon sulfur bond requires higher energy to break. So it uh, uh, meet our expectation, also meet the uh, other literature uh, report, uh, which means uh, uh, CC bond relatively easier uh, to break than CS bond. This uh, first order degradation kinetic was observed, which means uh, the bubble water surface is not saturated. Yeah, if we will increase initial concentration, we will see DC over DT uh, linearly increased with the initial concentration. Hmm. Okay, uh, next one, uh, the degradation in five milligram per liter, uh, five milligram per liter uh, Swan E River natural organic matter is a typical NOM we used in environmental study. Yeah, uh, you can see slight to moderate drop of the uh, reaction rate. Yeah, first order reaction rate constant. Yeah, so NOM reduced the degradation rates. They compete for the uh, reaction site. Also, uh, uh, also uh, impede. Also, uh, kind of uh, make. Uh, PFNA and the PFHXS are less accessible to the bubble water interface. Then how to boost the reaction? I bubble the water with argon. argon. So use the dissolved argon instead of uh, dissolved air. Previous two tests with the dissolved air. Uh, because argon has a different polytropic index. Yeah, it, uh, with the presence of dissolved argon, uh, we will uh, it will produce a more uh, violent collapse resulting in higher temperature. So, so especially temperature is uh, uh, critical for uh, PFHXS because CS bond requires higher energy, higher temperature to break. We can see the degradation rate is uh, almost triple, almost triple compared to sodium chloride in air uh, condition. Yeah, and also we saw an uh, increase in the first order degradation rate constant for PFNA. Mm. Now we are evaluating the uh, intermediate products after sonication. Um, the, we use LCMS, MS, and uh, try to evaluate the degradation pathway and give the overall picture of the degradation. Okay, third example is uh, ultrasonic degradation of natural organic matters. Yeah, as I said before, we, they are typically not the target for ultrasonic degradation. However, they, they are there. They always participate in uh, ultrasonic degradation process. So motivations of this study is uh, NOM is uh, ubiquitous in surface and ground waters. <coughs> they inevitably participate ultrasonic degradation of uh, anthropogenic contaminants in water bodies, yeah, surface water, ground water. Uh, need to systematically characterize the changes of chemical property of NOM through sonication and provide implications how their reactivity changed and uh, the impact on the ultrasonic degradation of the contaminants. Okay, uh, two NOM uh, model, <coughs> two uh, model NOMs are chosen for this degradation. Aldrich is from coal with a high aromaticity and the Pohuki peat NOM is a uh, represent a typical natural organic matter from agricultural soil. Yeah. <coughs> this uh, two <coughs> reactor system of ultrasound. First one, left side is a 20 kilohertz ultrasound. Yeah. <coughs> right one is a high frequency, 354. Uh, what's the difference? Typically, low frequency ultrasound, uh, they produce less bubble, but more violent collapse of each bubble. In other words, the physical effects of low frequency ultrasound typically stronger than high frequency. However, high frequency produce more bubbles and weak collapse. Uh, OH radical typically form during the, form uh, during the final collapse of the cavitational bubble. So higher quantity of uh, cavitational bubbles yield more OH radicals. Yeah. In other words, uh, low frequency, stronger mechanical effects, high frequency, stronger chemical effects, more OH radical. Now you can see the evidence for these uh, two different sonication systems. The black dot line is a 20 kilohertz ultrasound. 
operate at 450 watt per liter, it's high energy uh, level. And uh, two energy levels operated for the uh, high frequency ultrasound. Top one is 450, same as uh, low frequency ultrasound. <coughs> that between, it's a uh, high frequency operated at the low, at, uh, low energy level, 120. You can see even operate at low energy level, high frequency produce more hydrogen peroxide. By the way, hydrogen peroxide is from the two OH radicals combined together. Uh, higher hydrogen peroxide concentration is, uh, suggests more OH, OH radical at that sonication condition in DI water. <coughs> How does NOM react with OH radical? <coughs> OH radical can add it to the uh, aromatic ring, uh, then with the presence of uh, uh, oxygen that finally lead to the ring cleavage or ring opening of the aromatic carbon. So this case is a uh, decrease of uh, aromatic carbon and uh, turn them into aliphatic carbon. So next one is aromatic or aliphatic carbon react with OH radical can produce uh, carboxylic acid. Then finally you can uh, mineralize it into CO2. Then we did a uh, carbon-13 NMR to see how the transition uh, made for the NOM through sonication. Left side is Aldrich, right side is Pohuki Pit. Uh, the pink shadow indicate aromatic carbon area, and the, yellow, uh, the green shadow indicate aliphatic carbon area. Yeah, you can see bottom one is uh, before sonication, then low, low frequency ultrasound, then high frequency ultrasound. Yeah, top one, high frequency ultrasound produce o, more OH radical you can see the peak of aromatic carbon decrease, decrease, uh, which means uh, OH radical participate to the ring uh, cleavage of aromatic carbon. Uh, less change, slightly increase in aliphatic carbon peak area following same order. Yeah, same thing happens for Pohuki pit. Yeah, because in this case, we also observed TOC reduction because mineral, mineralization of uh, aliphatic carbon can happen. Okay, also uh, decreasing hydrophobicity. We monitor this uh, by specific UV absorbance, absorbance at 254 nanometer. Uh, see decrease with uh, sonication time. Uh, high frequency, high power, see the most decrease. Uh, then next one is uh, a high frequency, low power. And uh, low frequency, high power, uh, it's uh, in line or least uh, decrease in sewer 254. And uh, aromaticity, uh, we already saw this in a carbon-13 MR, but uh, we also did a sewer at 280 to verify that. Yeah, you can see, again, same trend, most decrease with a high frequency, high power. Then uh, high frequency, low power between, and uh, 20 kilohertz even operated at high frequency, uh, high, high power level. 20 kilohertz even operated at a high power level, it's a, see the least decrease in sewer 280, yeah. That is a, arrow, is a total acidity of NOM before and after four hours of sonication. Uh, again, you can see insignificant change for 20 kilohertz ultrasound. However, more increase with the high frequency, even, uh, uh, with a high power level of a high frequency ultrasound. Again, a little bit decrease here. Uh, it's a, we saw mineralization happen. Yeah, this uh, organic uh, carboxylic acid can be decomposed, even overexposed to OH radical. Yeah. This uh, NOM reaction with uh, OH radical, yeah, can produce uh, carboxylic acid. Yeah, this is the reason we see the total acidity of NOM increase after sonication. Then, uh, how about molecular weight? <coughs> this is a SEC, size exclusion chromatograms. If you are familiar with this, it's a typically big molecules appears first, earlier than smaller molecules. Uh, top one, number one is a before sonication, number two is a, a low frequency power, low frequency high power of ultrasound. 
third is a uh, high frequency, low power, and the fourth is a uh, high frequency, high power. You can see the trend. They are typically the, the peak area, the peak, the height of the peak uh, uh, decreases uh, from one to four because of uh, which radical, right? Yeah. However, we see some interesting uh, result. See, there's a cross point between two and three. Two is a low frequency, high power, and three is a high frequency, low power. Yeah. Although more OH radical produced at three condition, we see curve two prefer preferentially degrade molecules with a detention time lower than 8.5 minutes. That's big molecule. The 8.5 minutes corresponding to 6400 Dalton, which means a low frequency ultrasound preferentially degrade bigger molecules, big molecules, yeah. So here, hydro, uh, hydrogen peroxide or OH radical alone couldn't explain the results because if it was just a uh, OH radical participate the degradation of uh, NOM, we should see uh, this is a straight line, straight line. At least uh, more OH radical, we will see more decrease in um, molecular weight. Yeah. However, here we have a less OH radical, but we see more decrease in molecular weight. What happened? This uh, similar mechanism for physically break down big molecules by sonophysical effect. Yeah. Here is NOM. It's a ultrasonic wave and the flow pattern opens the gyration, increasing radius of gyration of a natural organic matter. And the cavitational collapse nearby can the shock wave can break down the big molecules. In this case, we saw the cross point is 6400 delta. Yeah. So a physical effect of ultrasound definitely play the role in degrade big molecules. Okay, what are the implications for the NOM property changes through sonication? It will facilitate desorption of hydrophobic organics from NOM because uh, the hydrophobicity of NOM decreased. decreased. So because uh, uh, decreasing hydrophobicity and aromaticity of NOM through sonication. Also promote complexation between metal cations and uh, NOM because increasing acidity of NOM through sonication. Also increase the bioavailability, uh, bioavailability of uh, D, uh, NOM because uh, we found uh, uh, decreasing molecular weight. Typically microorganisms like to uh, utilize low molecular weight first. Okay, uh, I published this book as the lead editor uh, in 2011. So if you are interested in, in uh, uh, learning uh, more fundamental knowledge and application of ultrasound, uh, this book is available at the UMN library. I check, yeah, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, it's a CRC reference, uh, research uh, reference handbook, yeah. Okay, uh, finally, I would like to thank the uh, Brown uh, Intertech visiting professorship. Uh, uh, so, uh, Joe, uh, Bill, Matt, uh, Dan, Dan, Dan uh, Yusuf, and uh, Mike is a uh, uh, research group members. I worked together during my visit, uh, study uh, degradation and the remediation of uh, perfluoro chemicals. So, my uh, uh, my PhD advisor, also research collaborators, uh, Linda, Hao, and uh, Ray, and uh, uh, Ziki. Yeah. Thank you very much for your attention. I would be glad to take your question. Mm. So the floor is open for questions. Hi, Pete. Oh. <coughs> question about the scale that this can be applied because it seems like yeah. uh, there's really not much you can do with perfluorochemicals and, and this looks really um, promising mm. Mm. but um, it, would it be something that 
you know, what scale would it be realistic on? Would this be something you could treat um, some of the DOD sites where they have high levels oh, yeah. of the firefighting foams or, hmm. you know, what, what are the, I guess, the bounds at which this could be applied? Yeah, good question. The scale up is a problem for ultrasound, yeah, uh, because uh, I believe it's a cost issue, yeah. Uh, one way is uh, you, we can concentrate the perfluorochemicals chemicals by uh, RO membrane. Then we use the ultrasound technology to treat the concentrate. For example, we concentrate uh, 100 times compared to the original concentration, then we use the extreme. Yeah, okay, thanks. Mm. Mm. A question regarding the reaction with, with NOM. Yeah. Mm. It, and I might have been interpreting things wrong, but it looked like hmm. reaction with NOM was somewhat slower than you would, like the chemicals were pretty fast, but the NOM seemed somewhat slow. Yes, yes. Is that because the size is so, is that a size effect? Because I would think there's so many more reactive sites on the NOM that you might get more reactivity. Yeah, good question. Yeah, NOM, the background concentration typically less than 10, but uh, you consider their molecular weight. Their molar concentration really slow. Yeah, when they are big, they have a slow process moving to the bubble water interface. Also, the, they are so big, also uh, maybe kind of uh, uh, the contact between the bubble and the NOM molecules is less, less. This is the reason it's very hard to degrade. You can see always use four hours something yeah, to degrade it. Also just a little bit degradation, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> How do they measure the temperature in these bubbles? A oh, good question. It's uh, uh, this 5,000 and uh, 500, 500 uh, ATM and 5,000 K, it's from model. They from a physical uh, uh, kind of collapsing the energy balance calculate. Actual people actually use advanced instrument to measure the temperature. Uh, actually measure is a uh, about a little bit about 3,000 K. It's uh, so tiny, it's really hard to capture. Also, short, uh, short life disappear very quickly. Yeah, okay. This uh, is a full model uh, kind of calculation. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I think the major problem is that mm. uh, you don't mm. have enough energy in order to measure something. You have to have that, that signal that mm. your sensor is going to, 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 to process. Mm -hmm. And the amount of energy that is generated in those little bubbles is mm -hmm. so small right. that uh, the sensor will not, will use most of that energy just to get activated, mm. but not to measure. So, right. so I guess you will never get the, the mm. right yeah. temperature there. Right. So we have a mm. really good sensor. Mm. Yeah, sensor. <laughs> <clears throat> Any more questions? Okay, let's thank Professor Chanley. More. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Mm. 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 Thanks, Bill. Nice. <laughs> mm.